When scientists first found out about this tribe, they were really surprised and worried. The tribe, known as the Dogon, seemed to know a lot about the universe, even though science hadn't discovered these things yet. How could a person in simple clothes know more than a scientist who studied their whole life? Let's find out, it's pretty interesting, so keep reading. Let's talk about the Dogon tribe. They live in a dense jungle in Mali, Africa, where it's hard for sunlight to get through even during the day. There are about 200,000 Dogons who live near a river in caves and basic huts. They've stayed isolated from the rest of the world for many years, which helped them keep their unique way of life. Two French researchers, Marcel Griol and Germain Dietelin, found out many amazing things about the Dogons. They were not only interested in their culture but also in their knowledge of space. Griol lived with them for 10 years. He learned about their daily life, wrote down their stories, and, with permission, became a priest in their tribe. What surprised him? The Dogons lived in simple huts and had basic farming methods. Even when Griol wrote articles about them after World War II, they didn't attract much attention. One day, an English astronomer named Rupert saw Grohl's articles and was amazed. The Dogons seemed to know about a star in the Sirius system. Sirius is a star that was only discovered in 1862, just before World War I. It was found to be very dense and called a white dwarf. Historians agree that the Dogon tribe arrived in their land, called the Bandiagra Plateau, at the start of the 10th century. There is a cave with paintings from 700 years ago. The entrance to the cave is protected by a special saint. This saint's job is to guard the cave, and the whole tribe takes care of him, bringing him food. But no one can get close to him, not even when delivering food. When he dies, another saint takes his place. So, what are they hiding in the cave? Inside the cave are amazing paintings and important information. For example, there's a drawing showing a line connecting the Sirius star system with our sun. This would be normal if it just pointed to Sirius, the brightest star in the sky. However, the Dogon tribe lives in Africa, where Sirius disappears from view for months. On July 23rd, Sirius, a bright red star, rises just before the sun and is visible for a short time. This event is called the helical rising of Sirius, which happens when Sirius, the sun, and Earth are aligned in space. Ancient Egyptians also knew about this and made holes in the pyramids so that the star's light would shine on the altar. The Dogon told scientists about two other stars near Sirius A that are hard to see through a telescope. They even described the white dwarf star, Sirius B, which was only confirmed in 1862. The Dogon knew a lot about this star, saying it is very old, very small, and made of a substance they called Dumo. They said it takes about 50 years for Sirius B to orbit Sirius A. But how did this ancient tribe know so much about a star that scientists only studied in the 20th century? The Dogon had a drawing in a cave that scientists couldn't understand until computers calculated the orbits of Sirius A and B. It was a precise model of how one star moves around another. The Dogons couldn't have done this on their own. It seems they might have learned this knowledge from another culture. The Dogon tribe might have learned about the universe from ancient Egyptian priests. But this doesn't fit because the Egyptians couldn't have known about the explosion of Sirius B, as their civilization ended long before that. The Dogon's beliefs include detailed ideas about the universe, and they know about all the planets in our solar system, like Neptune, Pluto, and Uranus. They also knew about red and white blood cells and human body functions long before scientists discovered these things. So, where did the Dogon get all this knowledge? When asked, the elders say it came from the Namo, beings who arrived on a spaceship from the Sirius system. According to Dogon myths, their ancestors lived in a place called Mande and were descendants of a figure named Lebi, who was linked to the Namo. Lebi had two sons, the elder became the ancestor of the Dogon tribe, and the younger founded the Aru tribe. When Lebi died, the Dogon moved his remains but found a living snake in his grave. They took some earth from the grave and followed the snake to Mali. Scientists who studied the Dogon found they knew a lot about areas like molecular biology and nuclear physics, even though they can't use this knowledge. The Dogon have kept this information for centuries without writing it down and can explain their drawings clearly. This incredible knowledge of the Dogon tribe, including their understanding of planets like Jupiter and Saturn, is surprising not just to ordinary people but also to scientists. For Jupiter, the Dogons draw a circle with four smaller circles around it, representing Jupiter's four largest moons. For Saturn, 
they draw two circles, showing they know about Saturn's rings. One day, the tribe's chief said that a UFO-like object came from the sky, and beings got out of it. These beings talked to the Dogon and said they came from Sirius B, and shared their knowledge with them. These beings were very tall and aquatic, meaning they lived in water and wore clear helmets filled with liquid. The Dogon called them Nomo, which means to drink water. The Dogon tribe has always seemed advanced. They have given historians and anthropologists many unique artifacts, like tools and figurines made from stone, bone and wood. Many of these items are at least 4,000 years old. Some scientists think that missionaries who came in the 1920s gave the Dogon their knowledge. They believe the drawings are just coincidences. However, if the Dogon had learned this in the 20th century, they would have mentioned more moons of Jupiter by 2012. 67 were known and more details about the Sirius system and galaxy. Missionaries wouldn't have known these details at that time. The Dogon's astronomical facts are linked to their rituals, which go back at least 1,200 years. German scientist Dieter de Hermann says it's impossible to fully prove or disprove how the Dogon got their knowledge. What do you think about all this? Share your thoughts, it's interesting to hear different opinions. Now, let's learn about another fascinating group, the Guanche, who were the first people on the island of Tenerife. They looked very different from others in that region. The Guanche people were tall, with fair hair and light skin. Sadly, they no longer exist today. In ancient times, they strongly resisted colonizers and were almost completely defeated in the 15th century. Those who survived were scattered around the world. The Guanche people had many mysteries about their life and customs that we still don't fully understand. Spanish sailors weren't the first to hear about the Guanche. An Arab geographer named Ali Idrisi mentioned them in a book around 1050. He briefly described their appearance as light-haired people with striking looks. Later European explorers added more details, like the quote from Jean Betancourt, who said the Guanche were incredibly strong and could break shields with their stone-throwing skills. Let's find out what made the Guanche so unique and how they lived. The Guanche believed that God created people from both earth and water. They thought of themselves as children of the sun. Old records say, our ancestors said that God placed us on this island and then forgot us. But one day he will return with the sun, which he makes rise every morning and which created us. The name Guanche means children of the volcano and old stories say they came from the fiery tide, the tallest volcano in the Canary Islands. One big mystery about the Guanches is where they came from. Normally, people living on an island would have developed sailing skills, but the Guanche had no boats and the nearest mainland was 115 km away. It's hard to believe they swam from America or Africa. Another puzzle is their language. The Guanche are believed to have spoken three languages, two for talking among themselves and one for communicating with outsiders. This third language is lost, but some material remains. The Guanche also used a whistling language for long-distance communication, which is still used today on one of the Canary Islands called Silbo Gomero. The island itself has its own mysteries. Researchers found pyramid remnants that look like those in South America, as well as rock inscriptions and mummified remains in the ancient Egyptian style. The mythology, history, and archaeology suggest that every people have their own myths and stories that might explain real events. However, the Guanche are still a mystery. Their legends say they came from the depths of the Tiaid volcano, which is the highest point on Tenerife. The volcano is still active and last erupted on November 18, 1909. The Guanche didn't leave any records about their origins, except for their connection to the volcano. Archaeology hasn't given clear answers either. Many rock inscriptions and mysterious ruins have been found, but it's puzzling how ancient people could have built these structures. They used metal tools, but the Guanche were in the Stone Age and didn't have such tools. Historical sources also create questions. Ancient visitors to the Canary Islands, like the Romans, Greeks, and Phoenicians, didn't mention the Guanche in their writings. This suggests that mythology, history, and archaeology haven't provided clear information about where the Guanche came from. Despite this, we know the Guanche existed. Their language was nearly silent or used whistling, making it hard to study. They also had a third language for talking with outsiders, which some think might have been a Berber language from North Africa. This raises the question, did the Guanche speak this language originally, or did they learn it from others? While there is some speculation about their Berber connections, their traits are more similar to North African and Middle Eastern people. The Guanche's light hair and skin might be due to the fact that isolated people of Caucasoid race often become lighter in skin tone over time. 
The guanche culture on the Canary Islands continues to interest researchers. They keep finding signs of guanche cultural development, like graves, tombstones, cave paintings, broken pottery, and other household items. The most impressive finds are certain structures. The pyramid-like structures are found in the eastern part of Tenerife, in the village of Guimar. Some people think these shapes might have been made accidentally by farmers while plowing. However, many scientists, researchers, and locals believe that there used to be more of these structures on the island, but they were taken apart and used as building materials. Thor Heyerdahl, a famous traveler, noticed 30 years ago that these pyramids were built on purpose because there were signs of stone cutting on their corners and the land was leveled before building. Heyerdahl's records show that the stones used were not just field boulders but pieces of lava. Further research found that each pyramid was built with an astronomical purpose in mind. We still don't know exactly how old the pyramids are or who built them. The Guanche people lived in a cave beneath one of the pyramids. That's all for today. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and goodbye.